three men sentenced to hand amputation for theft in Sudan. Three men in Sudan were recently sentenced to hand amputation for stealing, making it the first time such a punishment was handed down in almost a decade. The men were accused of stealing gas cylinders in Sudan's most populous city, um, Om Durman. Uh, they were also given a three-year prison sentence for mischief and two, a two million Sudanese pound fine as uh, compensation. They, their sentence would be carried out at an unspecified date in uh, Kopur prison. The sentencing worries many, fearing that the ruling is a sign of Sudan sliding backwards into fundamentalism more than a year after a military coup halted the country's transition to democracy. Sudan signed the United Nations Convention to Stop Torture and Other Forms of Inhumane Punishment in only August 2021. The move should have led the country's criminal code to be amended to be better aligned with international human rights laws. The African Center for Justice and Peace Studies released a statement condemning the verdict and accusing the Sudanese government of not giving the three men a free and fair trial. So the, the current government is less islamic but um and they seem to be but they're more of a dictatorship compared to before so this is a, is this one of those situations where the people are more islamic than the government and democratically you would have more islamic stuff and less democratically you would go more in line with how the west wants you to be and you know it's hard to yeah this is a very good question, and I will be very honest in saying that I do not know enough about the current yeah. situation in Sudan to give you an answer. And I think it's important to say when you don't know something, right? So I yes. But um, my understanding is that so back in the eighties, that's when I think it was the eighties. Yeah, the the uh, Omar al Bashir, the previous dictator, was brought into power by an Islamist movement, right? And so there was a lot of that that influenced his rule. And then when there was the, I don't know if you call it a revolution in Sudan, I think that would be an appropriate word, um, a few years ago, you know, it brought in a pro-democracy movement that was showing a lot of signs of possibility and progress and promise. Really, really incredible, powerful things. They got rid of uh, execution for apostasy when that happened. They abolished flogging. Oh, now apostasy is still criminalized in Sudan, I should say, but you're not going to get executed for it anymore. So, okay, that's good. But now when the military junta took over, things in terms of rights, that was things that they signed on to to support in terms of progress during this period of pro-democracy are now sliding backwards or never properly enforced or implemented because of the junta. So, this is very worrying for a lot of people and the fact that it was this very strict form of islamic punishment that came in is significant because even for almost 10 years because it they said that this there hasn't been this kind of ruling that came down in almost 10 years which mm. means that even under towards the end of omar al-bashir's reign even under that period of, of the government they weren't doing these kinds of punishments right so this seems yeah, like yeah. potentially a fairly big step backwards. Um, yeah, why is it? Because it, it seemed like we, things were getting better fast, right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden it went 180 on it. Like now things are getting... We made a lot of progress on FGM criminalization, female yeah. genital mutilation criminalization. So that Is this just a one-off right? thing, maybe, this news? Or is this a general trend, do you think? I think we might be beginning to see a trend. I don't know, because... A few months ago or a few weeks ago, maybe D, our editor in the chat, lovely D, would have a better memory than I do. But not too long ago, we talked about a story where a woman in Sudan was sentenced to be stoned for adultery. Hmm. A woman sentenced to being stoned to adultery like within the past year in Sudan. Yeah. And that was very significant because also with that ruling, they had not had that kind of a ruling for about mm. 10 years. Very harsh corporal Islamic punishment. And now we're seeing that again with this ruling against these men. And the Africa Center for Justice and Peace Studies said, according to them, that these men were not properly informed about the um, consequences that they 
uh, face or could face, I should say, and they were not informed that um, the confessions that they were made that they, they, they gave would be used against them in court. And th those confessions, these so-called confessions were the primary evidence against them in terms of this theft. And then this is being used against these men to chop off their hands. Hmm. Well, that's not good. Let's keep an eye on Sudan. If more I news know. comes out, but yeah. what do you think about like, I don't know, these medieval, literally medieval okay. punishments, like bringing, bringing bought brought forward again yeah i mean so it must be because of I, I, okay i don't know but i really think if i had to guess it's because of pressure from people right because yeah. it's it's within these governments interests to not do these things because it would become a lot easier for them to deal with uh western countries right if they didn't have these things happening there right true but there's two things that you know one is the pe people coming from uh, the pressure from a, a part of society on their government, right? That want these things. Um, and two, the the fact that Russia and China are more influential in Africa now means that African oh, countries yeah. have, are feeling less pressure because of their they have they're less reliant on Western powers. Um, That's a good point. Because they're but because they're alternative sources of money and weapons, you know, and as the more China and Russia expand their power in, you know, Africa, the more likely it is for mm -hmm. know, for for these countries to feel free to violate human rights. Yeah. And when these kinds of punishments come forward in real life in the contemporary day and age, do you think Muslims appropriately? identify that this is islamic and this comes from the quran say it again because that's what sasan is saying as well sasan is in the live chat saying did you know that cutting hands is in the quran yeah this is where that comes from they're cutting hands specifically because it's in the quran what was your question well i don't know maybe this is more of like a westernized muslim question but when these kinds of things happen in real life and come forward in the news nowadays like do you think that your ordinary Muslim will like co correctly identify that this is this Islamic and this comes from the Quran and that's why this is happening. Ye I mean, or do where you, be like, Oh, I didn't it's know that. Or no, this isn't really Islam in Sudan or in the West. And I don't know in general, what do you think? Well, I, I mean, yeah. Question. Yeah. I mean, I, okay. Let me tell you how I didn't even think of mentioning that this is comes from the Quran because I assumed that, it was obvious. Like I, I just um, this shows my mindset. How, yeah, my mindset was like, do we need? Like I didn't even think about suggestions because the news was like, oh, they're amputating people's hands and stuff, and it didn't even cross my mind to explain to our audience that this is coming from the Quran because I just thought I just thought it was obvious. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so that answer is a question because that's the go-to. I mean, even Muslims who are kind of reformists uh, or mo moderate or whatever they want to call themselves, they know where this comes from. Mm -hmm. They might, they might, they might think like, "Oh, these Muslims are misinterpreting it," but they know it. They know it comes from the Quran. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I mean, at least I hope they do. <laughs> oh yeah, no matter no matter saying yes as an ex-Muslims, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's like, it's actually one disgusting thing about it is that it, it's the punishment um, for theft, and imagine it's the worst punishment. Two things how about how disgusting this is beyond just amputation is barbaric. Yeah. is that these are people who steal are people who are usually the society has failed them usually not often not always right um and they are incapable of finding legal ways and appropriate ways to make money and look what you do with them you make it even more difficult so the the, the correct way of treat, dealing with this is to try to get them into the economy maybe punishing them but also find ways to integrate like get them involved in you know making money integrate them into the money making 
um, you know, industries or whatever and train mm-hmm. them, give them the skills so that they don't have to rely on stealing. That's the humane, not only the humane thing to do, it's the thing that is best for society as well. Yes. But look <laughs> what the Quran does is like it, it takes away your ability to actually make money after that. You're handicapping not just the person, but society as well. So you failed them once, that's why they're stealing, and now you're failing them even way more. I mean, it's the the fact that somebody steals is often it, it should make us make pass a judgment on the system, not on that person. They're like, what did the system do to fail this individual? It's not the individual that is failing the system, it's the system that is failing the individual. But I've heard Muslims argue that this is actually a better cost benefit analysis for society because society will be less likely to commit crimes if they know that the cost is this high if they're caught. Yeah, but that's not the the, the thing is that they're stealing. You are you are only putting lipstick on a pig because now yeah. you, because the stealing is not the main problem. Okay? Armin, that's her wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. What, what is when somebody steals? You're seeing the surface, like the fact that somebody lost their property. That's the surface level analysis. There's something deeper about society that has led to this person stealing. And instead of just fixing that one individual that is stealing, you have to look at what is the deep, more deep rooted problem that has led to that. Right. So if you stop people from stealing. Uh, by fear, you're just not, you're just reducing the signs, the symptoms, you're removing the symptoms of a greater problem. So you're like, oh, I can see anything anymore. So the problem is gone. So like, oh yeah, we scared the crap out of everybody. So nobody's stealing. Great. Now you're not going to see the actual problem with you, with this, with your yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you telling me that keeping a medieval mindset in the 21st century might not actually be, uh, the know- problem is that this is actually not even medieval. Okay, this is too backwards for medieval. You know where the Quran? <laughs> no, it, I'm actually genuinely yeah. Because like in medieval times, people when people stole, they wouldn't cut their hands. Okay, that's not what they did. Okay, so this is actually you know in America we used to tar and feather people though. That is <laughs> brutal. That's torture. Yeah. Not for stealing. Not just for simple stealing. For public humiliation, which is psychologically I, worse for us. I know, I know, but like it, the crimes were bigger for that. Okay, that was rare. This is like you steal an apple, you lose a it's hand. Crazy this to is... think of a judge going home to sleep after he just sentenced someone to be tarred and feathered. Like, yes, yes. Sleeping soundly, right. that's crazy. Okay, let me make my point because I have limited time today. I need to go. Yes, um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, I was making a comment about medieval, and you didn't let me finish. The, the the Quran gets this punishment specific, specifically from Egypt, from the pharaohs, right? Mm-hmm. So this was the pharaoh's punishment uh, in Egypt, and the Quran even admits that, um, and it's copying that. And I don't understand how Allah, because this was not a pre-Islamic Arabic punishment. This was an Egyptian um, punishment that the Quran copied from the Egyptians. So the Quran made the Arab society backwards. Like a lot of people think, like, oh, the Arab society was backwards and the Quran made it civilized. Actually, no, it's it's, it's the other way around. God damn. Um, yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary. Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.